Hi, everyone. Judge Andrew Napolitano here for Judging Freedom. Today is Monday, June 13, 2022. It's uh, about 105 in the afternoon here on the East Coast of the United States. My guest today is John Paul Cortez, J.P. Cortez, who is the policy director of the Sound Money Defense League. J.P. is a very well-educated He's smiling because I participate in his education. He is a former student of mine. JP is very well educated in understanding the Constitution, in understanding free market economics, particularly that which is referred to as Austrian economics. And he devotes his life to preventing the dollar from being devalued. JP, you have quite a task ahead of you, but today you have a pleasant task. Welcome to Judging Freedom, my dear friend. Judge, it's so good to see you again. Thank you for having me on. Yes, of course. So what what does the Sound Money Defense League do? And how on earth, without getting rid of the Federal Reserve, can we stop the devaluing of the dollar? So the Sound Money Defense League is a nonpartisan national public policy group that aims to remove the disincentives that surround getting into and out of gold and silver. So right now there are plenty of state laws that charge sales taxes, charge income taxes, that make it onerous and difficult to preserve the purchasing power of your money using anything other than the US dollar. And as we know, the dollar is you know more abundant at this point. It's, it's struggling to maintain. And despite that, there are still several states around this country that are that are you know chaining up the lifeboats that are making it more difficult for people to to preserve the purchasing power of their money. All right, so I live in New Jersey. If I wanted to go uh, and buy gold, trade cash for gold, what impediments does the state of New Jersey? And you can pick any state mm-hmm. you want if you're more familiar with North Carolina, for example, where you live. Uh, what impediments do, do the states typically impose upon me? A can I buy the gold? B, can I use the gold as mm. currency? Generally, no, especially in, in New Jersey. You chose, you chose a good example here because I'm sad to say New Jersey is among the worst states in the U.S. on this, on this issue. This is a state that charges you sales tax. When you exchange your dollar for four quarters at a gas station, you're not a taxable event. You're simply changing one form of money for another. But in the case of New Jersey, when you exchange a uh, $100 bill for a couple of ounces of silver, the state is going to come down and hammer you with a sales tax. When you sell the gold and silver, if you experience a gain, the feds are going to tax you on your capital gain. And then the state, again, will tax you. So you, in some cases, you've got triple taxation. So what we're talking about here is the understanding that, yeah, yeah, this inflation problem, this is largely a federal problem. And, and the dysfunction, the monetary dysfunction that flows is, is largely a federal problem. But the states don't have to be a, a party to this federal mismanagement. They can opt back into the Constitution by passing some of this legislation that allows gold and silver, the only form of money mentioned in the U.S. Constitution, to act as actual money. Okay, so you're target is not the federal government and it's not the Congress and it's not the Federal Reserve, even though I know you and I uh, agree on this and everybody watching us right now or nearly everybody watching us right now would love to get rid of the Federal Reserve. Mm -hmm. Your target is state legislatures. Is that right? We do have worked on federal projects. Uh, Congressman Alex Mooney from West Virginia uh, has been a champion on the sound money issue uh, to uh, bringing up uh, old, old Ron Paul's, uh, the edit the Fed, or excuse me, audit the Fed, um, audit the America's gold supply. Uh, so with legislation like that, there, there certainly have been efforts that have pushed forward on the federal level. But the reality is that there's a reason it's called a swamp and it is gridlocked and it is a cesspool and things don't get done on that level. So if you want what, to enact real states, change. Okay. What, what states are amicable, if any, mm-hmm. I'm going to guess Texas, but I'll, I'll let you address this. What states are amicable to the use of gold and silver as a medium of exchange? 
there are Texas is a good example of a state that has taken proactive steps to allow people back into gold and silver by removing the taxes, uh, removing the sales tax. And I believe Texas has no capital gains tax by law across the state. Um, so in this case, the, the the disincentives, removing the friction around getting into and out of the dollar important thing. All of these laws, though, are contingent on uh, uh, the issue of non-compulsion. I can't force you to take uh, a gold eagle. I can't force you to receive payment in precious metals. But by passing legislation like this, it allows people who want to transact in precious metals or in whatever they want to, it allows them to do that. So uh, if I went into a, a store that sold cowboy boots in Dallas, could I pay for the boots in gold? If the merchant wanted to accept your gold yes and, and if i if i went into a comparable store in princeton new jersey hmm. could i pay for it in gold no they likely would not let you pay for that in gold and you would have to you would be taxed up and down on all the way across the transaction well i guess you have your work cut out for you uh, jp <laughs> i mean even even if the even if the states I mean, let's say every state in the union went along with what uh, Texas is doing with respect to gold, and I'm, I'm going to guess it's the same uh, with respect to silver. Isn't the real culprit the Fed? Isn't the real reason we don't have a sound money is because the Fed creates money out of thin air? It absolutely is. You're absolutely right. And you were the one that taught me this so many years ago. I was sitting in the classroom learning about you know the the importance of the first amendment is was what you brought up and you you told us you asked us what is the most important word in the amendment and you know the the freedom right assembly all of these these you know possible answers were thrown out and you eventually told us that no the answer is the because the idea is that our freedoms our rights precede the government these are not things that are granted by the government and so famous uh very notable economist as that you know as well as I do, um, or his work, Ludwig von Mises, said that sound money should be a, a, an enumerated right. It should be written, uh, inscribed among the right to uh, the right to assembly and the freedom of speech, because it is that important to a, a, a uh, thriving society that sound money be uh, be paramount. You know, there's only and, and you know this from the class, even though it was a while ago, there's only two crimes defined in the Constitution. One is treason, and the other is debasing the monitor, the money supply. Mm -hmm. well, the government does both. The government commits <laughs> treason. The yeah. government commits treason when it violates, uses violence to violate our rights, and the government debases the, the monetary supply with every tick of the clock. Mm -hmm. And so now we're looking at what 8.6 was the latest CPI number that came out uh, yesterday, I believe. We're living here and worldwide and in a scenario where people are struggling to afford basic life necessities. People are struggling to afford housing and food and medicine. And there is a, a an intentional policy of pricing people out of life. The, the government inflation is a policy choice and the government is intending by by choice to make everything more expensive for people that are already struggling. This is on, on a moral front, on an ethical front, on a political front. This is criminal. What does the uh, Sound Money Defense League advise people with respect to silver or gold? Are, are they hedges against inflation? Or are you going to need the cash with which you would buy the silver and gold to buy gas for your car and food for your kitchen table? For tens of for thousands of years, uh, gold and silver have served as a hedge against inflation since time immemorial this is uh and and that's what makes gold act as sound money the fact that a government a government um you know a, a government lackey did not wave his or her wand and decide gold or silver have value gold and silver have value because they've been tested by the market a free market this self-correcting mechanism where there's profit and loss and there's 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 failure built in a self-correcting mechanism and that's what make gold and silver good money, not because uh, a government agent 
dubbed it legal tender, not because an executive order was passed. That is not where money derives its value from. And it, it is it is hubris of the government to believe that that is it is simply within the will or the power of the government to declare things money and then simply everything would go on as fine. JP, it's a pleasure to be with you. We're both a little older. You are just as articulate <laughs> and passionate uh, as when I had the pleasure of having you in the classroom. Uh, we'll have you back again. Uh, we'll have you back again soon. Uh, you're doing the work of the angels. Keep it up, my friend. Thank you, Judge. So great to be with you. Thank you. Judge Napolitano for judging freedom.